Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic for our second video today and um, big day two with Scott Strosal's puzzle um, to be released on the 1st of October on um, Patreon. So that is going to be a puzzle hunt themed on pirates. And uh, although we missed Talk Like a Pirate Day a week or two ago, that is up there and uh, it's going to be absolutely epic. So do look out for it on the 1st of October. Do become a patron if you haven't already. It'll be worth it just for that hunt alone. There are some absolutely um, ripping puzzles there. Really good ones. So let's concentrate for now on this puzzle today. Now this has come from Johannes Quack and we have featured him before. I've certainly done a puzzle by him before on the channel. And uh, I'm looking forward to this one. Now, what's going on here? Well, this is a commemoration of Ronald Graham, the creator of Graham's number. And any uh, mathematical number theorists amongst you will already know that. Um, others may want to know that this is pretty much the largest number in science. Now, what the heck do I mean by that? Well, it's the largest number um, that can that has ever been used, as far as is known, to bound any scientific um, proof or uh, theorem. And I do not understand the intricacies of how it's created. The fact I loved from the Wikipedia page is that the known universe is not large enough to contain any representation of this number. However, astonishingly, we do know things like what the last 15 digits in it are. And um, it has been able to be characterized as G to the G superscript 64 under certain, um, under certain parameters. Do look it up in Wikipedia if you're interested in maths and if you're likely to understand it. Anyway, what Johannes has done is created this G shape of digits and 64 in the green. What's even better is that these digits, I think reading from the six, are the last 15 digits of Graham's number. So 6272624641953867, which is wonderful. Um, now, the rest of the rules, as well as normal Sudoku rules, I mean, no, none of the rules apply to that. They're just given digits and the colors are for fun. But we do have eight little killer clues. And we don't know what those little killer clues are. In the, in the diagonals marked, each, the sum is given. And we have the list of the eight sums here, but we don't know which um, sum applies to which digit. I don't know if these little killer sums are relevant to Graham's number. I suspect, knowing Johannes Quack, that they are, but I'm not aware of that. So apologies, and if you ex can explain what they're doing here, and if they are relevant, or if they're they may just be numbers that make the puzzle work, that's fine. I mean, I already like the construction. Anyway, the little killer rule is that the sum of the full diagonal, which can include repeats, is given, but we have to determine what the eight sums are and where they apply. So I've provided this little kind of grid here so we can mark off which number um, clue is applied to which sum. And... Uh, We'll use those as we go along, I hope. Those are the rules. Do have a go at the puzzle on the link below the video. Don't expect the check function to work because I've provided these extra columns. That's not going to happen. Um, it's just going to return wrong when it's not. Um, but give it a go. See what you think. Let us know in the comments. And I'm going to have a go now. So let's get cracking. Well, there's enough numbers provided that I think there may be some regular Sudoku we can do. And look, 2 and 6 are dealt with for columns 5 and 6. So in column 4, they're going to have to be a pair up in box 2. Uh, 4 must be restricted to those two cells because of these 4s. And that one, actually. 6 is over there somewhere. 6 in the bottom row is down there. And 2... Hmm, could be any of those. Um, okay, it's not quite as much. Ah, look at that. That's a naked single. 59146 in the column, 387 in the row. Graham's number has been very helpful in its physical existence in giving us a naked single there. Um, that means that's not a two. In fact, these three are 
3, 7 and 8 to complete column 3 in some order. Um, but we don't know. Now, let's have a look at these clues. Okay, look, we've got two single cell um, little killer clues. They've got to be the 6 and 7. So I know that those are clue 3 and clue 6. Therefore, I know that these two cells are 6 and 7, which are the totals of those clues. So that's pretty straightforward. And yeah, this one is two cells, and the only candidate here is surely the 10. So we know that that 10 refers to those two cells. So what can this digit be? It can't be 2, 3, 8, or 7, and it can't be 6, which is forming a pair in one of those two. So it's 1, 4, 5, or 9. Now it can't be a 5, because its little killer clue needs the complement to make up 10 there. So let's get rid of 5, and that is quite limited, but not enough. Um, okay, what's the next thing? Well, we've got two three-digit clues, but we've got 19, 20, and 20. Then we've got two four-digit clues, and one really long one, which is quite likely to be the 35, but could, I suppose, be the 31. We don't have many digits given on that. Ah, look at this four-digit clue, though. Yeah, that's good. This one clearly can't be the, the four-digit clue that's in the 30s. Only one of the four-digit clues can be in the 30s. It can't be this one, because even at its maximum now, it would be 6, 2, 9, 8, which adds up to 25. Nowhere near 31. So, that four-digit clue and these two three-digit clues are these two, these three very similar, 19 and 20. And that means that clue 1 and clue 4 are 31 and 35 in some order. Now, can that be the 35? What's its maximum? 9, 9 and 8, 8. No, that's 34. That is right, isn't it? We can't have... Yeah, I mean, a normal four-digit killer with no indication could be 9 and 8 in the middle, 9's on the outside. That would add up to... Oh, yeah, 35. Okay, so we know this isn't the 35. So we know that 4 is the 35, clue 4. But that runs all the way down here. And apart from the digits we've got, we've got six digits... Adding up to 27, that average is somewhere between 4 and 5 and is very unhelpful, therefore. It's n not near a maximum or a minimum. So this one adds up to 31. Now, what do we know about how it adds up to 31? Um, what's the maximum again? 9, 9, 8, 8, 34. So there's three degrees of freedom. So we could have 9 there, not 8 or 7, or 6, which is in the column. So that is 9. We can't go more than 3 degrees of freedom below the maximum. I think the same is true again here. We've got 8, 7, and 6. No, got to be careful. Now we're in this box. Um, 9 and 8 are the maximum of those two. So actually, the degree of freedom, the degrees of freedom thing applies to both they can be reduced to, instead of adding up to 17, adding up to 14. And 14, 15, 16, or 17. If they were 14, that could be done like that. If they were 15, I think it would have to be 9 here and 6 here. If they were 16, 9 here and 7 here. And if they were 18, 9 there and 8 there, I think that's all that can be done. The other 14 is 8 and 6, and that can't work because of that. So they are quite limited. Now, over here, this can't be 9, 6, or 7. 8 was its maximum, but now we can come down to 5 as a possibility. And this hasn't been quite as helpful as I was hoping. 9, that could be... Oh, well, hang on. Yes, it, given that this is either 8 or 5, 9 and 8 is 17. 
These two would then have to add to 14. They would have to be 5, 9. If this is 5, though, these have to be 9, 8. So they're either 9, 8 or 5, 9. So let's get rid of the 6 and 7 options. Now, if they were 5, 9, this would be 6, 4. That would be a 7. That would be 1, 2, and then a 3, 8 pair. That is possible. If they were 9, 8, this would again be 6, 4. Yes, since these have to have a 9 in, be they 5, 9 or 9, 8, this 9, 1 is no longer a possibility. That must be 6, 4. So we get 7 and 6 filled in there. Might as well just complete this thing. 6 is the clue to 6. 7 is the clue given by the 3. 6, 7, 4. Does that? It doesn't tell us whether this is 9, 5 or 9, 8. Didn't expect it to. Oh, it does tell us about 2 and 6. 2 and 2 there. And that 2 gives us a 2 in box 3, which doesn't resolve anything about this little dilemma along the little killer clue. Ah, oh, but now we've got this little killer clue. We've got 4 there. Oh, we, we know this is 19 or 20, so clues 5, 7 and 8 and 19 or 20. Well, if it was 20, these would have to add to 16. Ah, I was going to say they have to be 7, 9, but actually, remember, they could both be 8s. In fact, that's quite plausible. Uh, if it's 19, they have to add to 15 which could be 9, 6, or 8, 7, either way. But still, we've got quite a lot of reduction of possibilities here. Um, probably missing some regular Sudoku. Probably have been for a while. Let's see. Ooh, maybe not. I don't know. I thought we might be able to resolve that before moving on. But I have not felt able to. Three now can't be there. So three is in column seven in that box. Oh, four is placeable now. Okay, yeah, I can do that. That is some regular Sudoku that that work gave us. Oh, but then it runs out. I was hoping to place four there and can't. Um, do we have to look at these other three? Oh, well, okay, we get a four into one of these little killers. So this is 19 or 20. So these two add up to 15 or 16. Now if they're 16, they're clearly 9, 7. If they're 15, they can't be 9, 6, because we've got 6 there and 6 there. So they'd have to be 8, 9, but they could be either way round, very frustratingly. But at least it restricts that to 9 or 8. And I didn't know whether this was 19 or 20. Now we've got one nineteen and two twenties. How are we going to resolve them? Um, oh, seven is now restricted to one of those two cells, and six to one of those two. Um, I don't know if that helps anything. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yes, that is interesting. These can now not be 7 and 9, making 16. Because that... Oh, no, it can't be 9 there, because that would push a 7 there as well as putting a 7 there. No, that is absolute codswallop. Okay, I don't know quite what I was thinking there. Um, ooh, how do we find something? What about this one then? No six in it, but that is the most limited information. Maybe we can rule that out from being a four. Four would require another 15 or 60. Maybe we can rule that out from being a three. Oh, that's not a seven now, just for what it's worth. Now, if that was a three, and now again, they could be 9 and 7 or 9 and 8. And there's nothing to stop them being that in this box. 
Wow, this is getting quite tough here. Um, 7426. Now, if I forget, oh, okay, let's look at the big one. 4 and 6 is 10, and 2 is 12. Minimums 20, 21, 22, 25, 26. It's miles below 35. I don't think the maximums are any more use. So, no, I don't think that's helping at all. So, do I need to focus on this? Now, what were these? These were either Let's just remember what the possibilities are. Oh yeah, I guess the way it works is it adds up to 31 and we've got 9. So these three add up to 22. So they are 9, 8, 5 in some order. Okay, that's interesting from this point of view. If they were both... Well, both of them could not be 8 if this was 8, 8 being 16 here. So I think we can rule that out as a possibility because one of those has to be 8. So that's something. 2, 3, 6, 9, oh look, 5. 5 can be placed there. Oh my god, if that's really important I'm going to feel a total dummy. Puts 5 in one of those two. Don't think that's resolved anything. It gives us a 1, 4 pair here that I had not realised. This is now 3, 8, or 9, 6, 7. Oh, look, 4 is now restricted up to the top. Um, not like that. Sorry, corner mark. Um, no, I'm not seeing how that helps. 5, 6, 1, 4, 2. This could be 3, 7, 8, or 9, which is not very restricted after all. That could be 1, 3, or 8. I am just going to pencil those in. This one, 2, 3, 1, 5, or 9. That's a surprising set for some reason. Now, let's go back to thinking about this. Now, I've ruled out that being 8 and 8. It can still be 9 and 7, although it has to be 7 there and 9 there. And it can't be that. It cannot be that. It can't be 8 and 8 because we need 1 8 at least in one of those. It can't be 7 and 9 because that would push a 7 here and you'd have two 7s there. So this does not add up to 20. It's the 19 sum and bang, 8 there. These other two must be both... These now are both 20. This one is 19. So these two add up to 15. And now they can be 7, 8 or 6, 9. I can't actually reduce any possibility. But now that I know that eight is nine, clue 8 is worth 19, these two are worth 20. This one is 7 and 9. And they have to be in that order because of the 7. Now how is this going to make 20? Ah, it's got various possibilities. This isn't a 7 anymore. Actually, that places 7 in the column. Now it doesn't have various possibilities. Now it is either 7, 4, 9, or 7, 5, 8 in either order. Ah! Ah, oh, so irritating. Um... Now, has that 7? Does that do anything else? No, it puts a 7 in one of those two cells. 4, 6, 2. We've got so little done around here. We've got a nice useful norm pattern in this box, but nothing looking into it to exploit it, really. 3 or 8 must be in one of those cells, but that's not useful. 2 is now restricted to one of those two. What have we got? 1, 5, 3, 8. That could be 3, 5, or 8. That could be any of them. Oh, now don't forget these wretched clues. This one we still have to resolve. This one we still have to resolve one way or the other. Um, 
oh yeah, there's no way it can have a six in because six has been, that can't be a six because that six is looking directly at it. I mean, I was just spotting that six is confined there. So it can't be six, nine at all. So that is now a seven or eight pair. And it's a pair, so this cell can't be seven or eight. And now we know that there's a seven in this row. This one cannot be it. So seven is here. So we could do that the whole time. Sorry, I've been so slow on that. That eight is looking across to that five. Now, not eight anymore. Um, come on, eight, nine, one, four. This cannot be an 8, so 8, 5 can't be that way around at least. Um, 2, 5, 9, 6, 7. This can't be 8, but this one can be. These are from 1, 9, and 6, which is not as helpful as I am demanding it be. 7, 5, 6, 1, 4, 2, no. Ah. Eight, nine, one, four. So seven. Ah, we can place seven in this box. It's got to be here. We've got those sevens looking in and ruling out all of those cells. So seven is now up here somewhere. Um, this is three, eight, or nine. That's not quite giving us a triple. Two, three, six, four. Seven, eight. Oh, it's so frustrating. Right. Maybe we can do something better here. We've dealt with... Sorry, I'm just going to arbitrarily choose five and seven there. They could easily be swapped around, but I don't like seeing that uncertain. But anyway, this is either nine, four or eight, five here. If it was eight, five... That would put three here, one here, a three eight pair there. That would put nine here. That's getting quite interesting. I can't quite, I mean, it's, it's a bit bifurcated though. Um, seven, four, two, six, what am I missing here? Ah, oh, yes, this five is in this Killer clue. So it had to be five, nine, eight. So we can fill in the nine and eight. Right. Sorry about that. So this is a three. That makes this an eight. This is now one and this is five and we've finished a box. That's a one, six pair. So we can get rid of one out of that. That's a three, four, eight triple. This is now nine. That hasn't resolved those yet, but surely we are getting close. Yes. Those are all given now. We get an eight there. That fixes this whole box. Last little killer is done. No, not the last little killer. Let us not forget this one. I'll come back to that in a moment, I imagine. Five and one in row seven. Two, eight, and five to place. So eight is in one of these cells. One and three is a pair there. That makes a two nine pair. Actually, we can place them because of the helpful nine in row four. Nine and five here. Yes, they can go in. We've got again the same nine. Two, six and three. No, nine, six, two. Come on. Yeah, that gives me that nine, which is the last in the grid, I believe. Seven, five, eight, six, two, nine. That is a naked single three now, surprisingly and helpfully. That puts a three up here. Two and six there. Five and eight is a pair here, which I cannot disambiguate yet. One, four and seven up here. That one can't be four, that one can't be seven. Ah, that gives me a one, four pair in column six. Uh, which is of no use at all. Five, eight, six, three. This is one or seven. Okay, let's have a look at this diagonal now. Four and six is ten. Eight and two makes twenty. Plus two more threes, twenty-six. 
we're looking for 35. So these two add up to 9. This one is 2, two or 8, actually, is all that's possible. So this is 1 or 7. <laughs> and they're both possible. But they give me a 1, 7 pair, which is actually very useful. How lovely. What a elegant piece of compiling that is. So 8 there, 5 there. Now I know this is a 2 and must go with a 7 for the diagonal if I did the maths right. Uh, we get a 5 there. Sorry for calling arithmetic maths for those that don't like that, but at least they get Graham's number to think about in this puzzle. 3, 8, 4... 4 and 1, they are resolved. This 8 and 5 is now resolved. We're on the absolute last legs here. There we go. That is the solution to Graham's number by Johannes Quack. And what an excellent puzzle that is too. So thank you very much for watching and very much hoping to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.